Hello my loves, here's my Nordstrom beauty haul of some beautiful beauty things that I got and this is just a restock of items that I already have. Just a few other things. I have been using these things for years now and every time I purchase them, I always get one or one extra so that I stock up because I, this is Anastasia Beverly, uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Gel Gel pour souci And so I have no makeup on except for I have some Chanel lip color from a lip palette that I have I'll also link it below, it's discontinued, they don't make it anymore But in case you're interested, there are still people who sell it on eBay, totally new And same goes for this YSL Parisian perfume I have been spraying this on twice a day for the past couple days because I miss this little sense of luxury. It literally looks like a jewel in your hand and they don't make this kind of packaging anymore for this. And the fact that it's discontinued, it's very special. So this is cranberry is the main scent, the main note. Then there's like raspberry and blackberry or something, but it's very one of a kind. There are only like a couple other perfumes that are even somewhat similar to this. And I know Dossie has their version, so I'll have that link below also. Um, depends on the scents that you like, but there's like a taste of flamboise of raspberry in it. And it's very rich and like dark, but still light and sweet. So very fruity. And I cannot say enough. Like I found this on Teen Vogue when I was a kid reading it cover to cover when I was like 14 years old. And then I also, before I get into the actual Nordstrom Beauty haul, I want to post an update about this. This is the Gucci setting finishing powder. This is in number two, Matte Naturel. And I got this at Selfridges, I think, or Harrods. I don't, one of the, one or the other. The powder still smells good. Like it still smells like that perfume smell. It's not as strong, but if you put your face to it, it's lovely. This. I tried using it and then this happened. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of what this, what do you call that? Gets hard and then it doesn't really work anymore. So then you have to use like the back of brush just to get some product. So this is my duster brush. It's just like from Amazon and came in a set and then I would dab it. I'll show you what happened. So the actual product doesn't come out anymore. And I just got this in August when I visited London. So it's, currently December. So I'll show you what it looks like. This is my finger. These are my fingers. <laughs> and this is me like really rubbing it in where it is dead and it's kind of dried up. What do you call it? Dead pan? I think that's what it's called. So that's what it looks like where the part that it's broken up where it says Gucci and embossed in the middle. I'll show you what that looks like because it's broken up. It's way more product than when it's where it's deadpan. So you have to break it up and get that powder to in order to get the pigment. And I use it on my eyelids and I use it more like a highlight without being super strobe lighty electric looking. Hello gorgeous, welcome to my bathroom in January. Uh, while I'm editing this video, as you can see, we put some art up, there have been changes. I, yeah, so um, there's even more that I'm looking at here. But so I Googled it, it's called hard panning. So this is the Gucci pressed powder now. It is when you have a powder product, say like an eyeshadow or a, whatchamacallit, setting powder that becomes hard on the top layer. I don't know if it's due to moisture or oxidization. However, how to solve it allegedly is by using a piece of tape to pull it off and you keep using the tape over and over until you pull it off, until like that top plasticky seeming layer pulls it off. But what I've been doing was actually using this comb to, to, to make it powdery and then using a powder brush to dab it on. So I have been using a more dense powder, not this one anymore, this is the one earlier you saw, but I've been using a more dense powder brush. I'll have the Amazon brushes brush set linked below and it's just a bunch of brushes and I only use a certain few, but this one applies more of the powder as a full, if you want your full complexion done and to be extra dolled up. And I've been using this as my foundation and my brightener all in one because it really does make you look glam and it's not oily. So I have not gotten any pimples with this versus using my creamy concealer, the oil-based one. How, and that's also getting more annoying to, whatchamacallit, to apply because I, I break out guaranteed every single time when I use oil-based concealer, I know I'm gonna break out uh, no matter how much I wash my face, how well I wash my face, whatever products I use. At the end, In the next morning, I always have like a bit of um, oil on my face. It, and it feels very excessive, 
where this happened. Anyway, um, I've been using powder, especially in the winter because I'm really moisturizing my face and there are, it actually makes my skin look better. So just make sure that it's moisturized and take care of it. But I'm gonna try the tape thing and see if it works. So this is what it looks like now. It's all scratched up because of the uh, comb. However, it is, it still does have, if you can see those dark points, it, those are the hard pan parts. So, well, this looks crazy. <laughs> I am pressing it down and applying it to the powder. Wow, it really did work. That is so cool. Look at that. It worked. All the hard pan spots are disappeared. So try this at home. Uh, if your stuff seems to get old, they say that it doesn't like you can always salvage your makeup and make it last longer. Everybody's always just buying new makeup instead and then hoarding a bunch. I see so many like if that's your job, if you're a beauty, beauty blogger, beauty vlogger, go ahead. But I'm not. I'm a person who is very funny enough. I'm very practical considering how extra I am or I may seem. But yeah, this is a huge world of difference. I can't wait to. I'm going to test it out and try it out right now. Oh, and by the way, I have also been using the pad more. So you can see it's more complex. It's more color in here. So, oh wow, that really, oh my gosh, this is, it works. Before I had to like work really hard just to get it out. And it's actually smooth again. Like the whole thing is smooth. And if you want to try that some more, just get some more tape and fix the layers um, accordingly. So I'm actually going to see how this Look, so you can see, by the way, all my skin discoloration and how uneven it looks. And I'm at home editing and studying for my real estate license. So I am just gonna touch up the spots that I normally do. I'm not gonna do a full glam look because I, I have to say, like, I'm really in love with powder and I forgot the powder, the, the power of powder. And um, it really makes me look put together, but you really have to um, kind of plan. Oh, sorry. My, I, I used some retinol pixie toner yesterday, so I might look like I have some flakes, but I already look more awake <laughs> and my skin tone already looks a bit more even. That's what I'm worried about because, um, skin discoloration is the whole re reason that I use uh, concealer. And I was looking on Amazon last night on online for Japanese beauty products that are skin lightening because I need to lighten like this one area you'll see in the video footage coming up next that it is it's really different from the rest of my face and my derm my not my dermatologist my facialist from back in LA said that it's vitamin d deficiency but then I don't know because I've had it five ever since I was a teenager so I thought it was hormonal and when I have my hormones intact I noticed that it's less severe and I really don't know what it is. I think most people aren't sure what it is. Anyway, I look like I'm punching myself in the face because <laughs> it's so aggressive, but it's really soft. It smells lovely the more I use it. And especially now, I feel like I smell it even more. And also because I'm applying it mostly around the nose area. And then I just like putting clear lip balm, but this is a world of difference. I'm not, well, I have, you can see I have so much rosacea. Something I loved about Westman Atelier Vital Skin Foundation. I, I'm trying to find the video uh, and all the footage of me trying everything, but I can't find it anywhere because I promised you guys a full review number two. And um, that was the best for rosacea. Like it just covers everything very naturally, very natural looking, but the formula isn't the best for me. I feel like they need to perfect more still or i just have bad skin i have no idea which it is because sometimes i'll try on makeup and i think is this good or do i just have bad skin <laughs> so skin makeup is always the trickiest there's so many factors and elements going on there that you have to consider how to how you take care of your skin do you get enough sleep do you eat do you exercise to get your hormones working the way they should be and this is a very natural look i would touch up my eyebrows to be a touch darker because i lightened them not intentionally, they just got in the caught in the crossfire and um, I would put clear lip balm, especially if I'm at home or even if I'm practically running errands. And then if I really want to glam up, I will put lip balm and then touch it up with some of the Chanel lip palette I mentioned earlier. I'll have it linked below. So 
I'm really happy. It's kind of hard to tell because I'm not in natural light. It's very gray outside. So the lighting just gets worse when I go into the natural light. <laughs> so I hope this makes some sense and enjoy the rest of the video. Stay until the very end. You're not gonna wanna miss this. There are some really luxurious red lip looks and please excuse my giant blemish. <laughs> That's just a heads up with the finishing powder for Gucci. I think it's beautiful. The packaging is lovely. It's a great compact mirror if you have a bit of a larger purse, but if you also don't wanna break the powder, don't take it out. <laughs> so don't take it outside. Uh, if you're like, th if you're the kind of person who throws your purse around, be a little bit more delicate with that. So that's just something to keep in mind. It smells lovely. And I like the fact that it's scented. A lot of people don't like scented because that means there's preservatives and things that go in your face that might be harmful to human beings. I have nothing against it. So, um, and especially the fact that like, I look like a million bucks when I use it. I feel like a million bucks when I use it and I don't have that feeling of my face hurts from wearing so much makeup all day. This is like if you want to go for a really extra glam matted look. Next is my Westman Atelier. This is what I have been using recently. This is in one and two. Problem with Westman Atelier Vital Skin Foundation. It's really a wonderful product. It's not harmful. My face doesn't hurt for using it. However, they do not have my exact color. NARS does, which was why this Nordstrom Beauty Haul came in. Also, for a couple other reasons, I got this like a restock sort of haul of my staple items. I know that it's ironic that I bought more things so that I could use them, not just to use them, but to kind of tailor down and edit down my beauty. Atelier One is a bit lighter, it's more my color. I don't know, things are different here since I haven't been wearing as much makeup. And the past few days that we drove across the country, I still like have my house in Hollywood Hills and I still have some uh, quite a bit of makeup there. This is what I brought <laughs> and my face felt light. And one day I even fell asleep with this makeup on. No pimples, nothing, nothing wrong, no face hurt. It didn't feel like my face was blocked and every time I wear it, it feels so light. It's just that the color is not exactly perfect. Every time I use it, I have to use it on my whole face and really do a glam look. It looks like my skin tone, like it still has my undertones. I really have to cover my whole face using it. When I only want to use concealer, which is what I like to do, keep it simple, I use NARS in custard. I have been using the travel one because I ran out of the large one. I also have marron glacé, but it's a bit more yellow. It's more warm tone for me. This is more neutral. It's more sandy. This is perfect. This is my exact skin tone. So if you're 30, Chanel beige, this is probably gonna fit you somewhere around that if you're a neutral tone. This is the OG for me. This has never steered me wrong and I always keep coming back to this. So I need to stock up some more on this. I hate not having backups because I hate not being prepared. I'm trying to use up all my beauty products. That's why I'm using up NARS mini travel ones. So I don't just have a bunch of stuff, especially if this space is smaller. I shouldn't have a lot of stuff. Um, this is the used one, the one I'm currently using. This is the new one that I just bought from Nordstrom. And then I also have another. So I've just been using concealer and then lip color and then brows. So it looks like I still have a human face with eyebrows and some lips. Lips is just for color to make me feel bright and make it stand out, make my teeth stand out a bit. I always go for soft brown. I have the darkest, darkest hair color. I stocked up always on my brows and just as a heads up, I get micro powdered. My, what the difference is, is micro blading makes you look like you have hairs and it's natural. It doesn't work for me. Ombre powdering means that it makes it look like you have makeup on. How you look when you have a glam face the reason why microblading doesn't work for me is because it makes it gives you the illusion that you have a bunch of hairs. The problem is I have zero hairs. So it will literally just look like drawn on lines. So I got micro ombre powdering. It, it also is better if you have oily brows. It lasts longer through the oily brows. So in between visits, I never leave the house without my brows done. And I'm not saying I do like the full brow. Sometimes I'll just do here at the darkest point. The whole point of getting microbladed or ombre powdered is to not have to add more things to your routine. It's to diminish things from your routine. However, if it's not touched up, you look crazy. You just look like you have faded tattoos on your face. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. So you don't want to leave the house looking like you're unfinished. So the next things I got, these Chanel lipsticks. Why? Why? I have these colors. So the problem is I have this beautiful palette my husband got for me years ago. I'll have it linked below. They don't make it anymore. It's on eBay. You can buy it new. It was $60. Now it's like $90. But this palette is beautiful. Throughout the years, when I first got it, I used the orange and the, the lightest red. Then I started using the matte red in the middle. And then now I'm using the really, really dark tones for winter. And it looks like this. So this is literally 
this and this together it's like a dark burgundy and then an even richer bordeaux it gives you like a little bit of a vampire look a little bit vampy but it contrasts my eyes like crazy makes my eyes look way more brown makes my hair look way darker makes my eye whites look really bright and healthy and young so youthfulness works better with uh taking like making the contrast higher so essentially taking like the the unwanted colors out of my face by not highlighting the yellows so these are very blue based reds and i wanted to carry this in something that wasn't a compact and something even smaller in the bathroom because uh i'm not here to like touch up my lipstick there's always a mirror in the car there's always a mirror in the uh, public bathroom in a restaurant and so i got similar colors i hope i'm gonna see them for the first time today um, in La Fascinon, in Rouge Allure Velvet 38, and then Rouge Allure Ink in 152 Chocon. I'm removing my lips with Garnier Brightening Micellar Water. Okay, there we go. This is what I do, just that tea area slash hourglassy kind of area. And I leave my eye bags because it's just a reminder for me to go to sleep early. <laughs> prime my lips a little bit with my Chanel lip balm. This is the clear one because oh. I'm gonna try this one first. This is a matte lipstick and it's very blue. It's very like burgundy brown blue. Bur burgundy brown blue. That's what I sound like. <laughs> Hearing myself. Oh, what I like to do by the way with the palette is I use a lip brush and I gradient it out. So I use the darkest, darkest color on the very inside. So it looks like the lip color is coming from the inside and it looks more natural that way instead of constantly touching it up on the outside where it looks crazy. It looks more faded. It looks weird, I don't know. See, it looks way brighter than it does on the bullet. I hope that you can see with this lighting here. That would look scary. Now you can see like all the texture. Yeah, I like to typically do it on the bottom lip because if I shape it on the top lip, it doesn't fully work. And then I work, I put it on the inside sides, but I'm gonna touch it up later. And I like that you press it. Oh, oh and by the way, on the inside, if you look, there's a CC because I have this in another brighter red. Now I am gonna go for the liquid ink. I think this is matte. I think it is. We'll see. And I love how small it is and compact because I think it's better. A little bit goes a long way and you cherish it a bit more. This is a very bitten look. This is a very aggressive red. When you start it from the inside middle and don't overline your lips or don't line your lips at all, it looks way more natural. I'll touch up the sides a little bit. I like to make the top lip look extra spread out wide and the bottom lip to look pouty. Bottom lip is so big that it goes over my cupid's bow. I will touch this with this brown mascara by Lancôme. This is the volume one that I have, the Definici. This is the precise one. I usually go for this one. Lashes to be super defined as opposed to looking voluminous because I have no lashes to begin with. It doesn't really bother me. And if I want to look really awake and bright for really glam eyelash curlers, <laughs> but otherwise day to day, I love the natural shape of my lashes going out like this. I think it's very beautiful when people have natural lashes. So I would use this mostly on the bottom, however. Today, I'm not gonna use it because the heater's on. It's gonna get a bunch of lint and dust in my eyes. Otherwise, this is the look. 
Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give this a like. Let me know what you think of this Nordstrom Beauty haul because I'm very, very happy with it. I love these lipsticks. Oh my golly. I'm going to use these forever from the, from now on. <laughs> these are going to be my forever colors. This is good if you want to um, keep this in your bag and you really need a palette or if you're traveling, you need a mirror. Chic thing that fits perfectly in your clutch. Oh my god. And it even has the gold packaging. I love those gold touches. It's so subtle. This I like because you have to, but this in your bag could be a problem if you accidentally bump it or have a bunch of stuff inside. Here is the vampire look with Chanel lip liner, La Croyon Livre. So this is 184 and I forgot, I said, oh, Rouge Intense is the color. I am really loving the back. Something that I always use when I do use lip color. And what I like to do to make it look like you have a lip lift so your lips don't look like this. A lot of people make the bottom lip look super heavy. They always look like that. So what you want to do is highlight just the middle part and then bring it up and you can use concealer to clean it up and then make, I like to highlight how tall this is because when people have a high lip, that's a sign of youth. So like little kids will make fun of each other for saying they have buck teeth and they always look like this naturally. And then as you get older, it sinks down and goes like this and it curls no matter how much lips you have. <laughs> so getting that lip lift, you can do it with liner. And this is gonna be the vampire look. I'm gonna grab a mirror because this is kind of tough. I already messed up. So what I'm gonna do, I messed up some more, so I'm gonna <laughs> clean it up. I like to highlight the whole top lip and then the bottom. Exaggerate the middle part the most. This is if I'm doing a very, very glam look and not necessarily doing it like an everyday look. I am going to fill it in now with Givenchy's Le Rouge de Velvet in 38 Grenat Fumé really really rich burgundy i was looking for a vampire lip and it might look a little bit more natural on me than it does on other people because i'm a deep winter so if someone who's like a summer or a spring wears it it looks like they're wearing a halloween costume love this because it's in velvet it's so wow very special but it's just that in your bag it gets dirty <laughs> so rcma in Shinto 